a few months back, Monique reached out and said that she needed some IT help. And I said, I'd be happy to help. And so I did. And, and as I was finishing up what I did, she said, oh, thank you, Pastor Donnie. Thank you so much. It took just a short period of time. Thank you so much. She saved me all kinds of time. Thank you so much. How could I pay you? <laughs> and I remembered in a moment, Monique and Al bringing communion to our church. Would you come and speak to us, sister? Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. God is good. I'm glad and grateful to be in the house of the Lord today to worship with you, Hope Chapel, <laughs> to have a good time with you, Pastor Donnie. God is good. He's so right. I did come to him some time ago, and I needed some help, and I was desperate. I'm, I'm not very good with IT and technical, uh, all this digital technology and all this stuff, but Al told me, he said, Pastor Donnie would probably be able to help you. And surely he really did. Like in a few minutes, you know, when you know your stuff, you know your stuff. And so, yeah, I said, how can I, how can I bless you back? How can I bless you back? And he was right and ready. <laughs> he knew just what he wanted. I think he knew before I got there. He probably already had it planned. I don't know. I don't know, but nonetheless, I'm just thankful to God that God brought us together in this way. We fellowshiped and worshiped together before. Um, many, on many occasions, but God saw fit to uh, allow this to happen, that, we, that I could be in this place with you all today at this time. Amen. So we want to give honor to God, God the Father, Jesus Christ, the Son, and the precious Holy Spirit. We honor him today. We give honor to, again to you, Pastor Donnie, Pastor Julie, Pastor Lala, to my dear pastor, my mother, my best friend, Pastor Helen Solomon. I want to thank and praise God for Solid Rock is in the house, Hope Chapel. Hope Chapel, Solid Rock, Solid Rock, Hope Chapel. God has brought us together finally, and it is a blessed thing, and I'm just glad about it. I'm thankful to God that everybody has brought them, has, God has allowed everyone to make their way safely into this place today. Amen to worship and to hear a word from the Lord today. And there is a word from the Lord. Um, I, I, I have to say, uh, as the Lord prepared me for this message, um, he did so in such a way that he has uh, caused me to have to um, even though he knows that I like to have a plan, he knows that I like to have my stuff together, you know, when I have to come before his people and, 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 and it, before him, in fact. And he still, he, he said, you're going to trust me all the way right up to the very moment. Amen. So there is a word from the Lord today, and it is a right now word. Amen. It is a right now word from the Lord. So we're going to allow God, we're going to allow the Holy Spirit to lead us through the scriptures today. And we're going to hear what God has to say to us today. Um, so if you have your Bibles, you can turn um, to the book of John. We may jump over through the Gospels just a bit. But if you get to John around the 13th, 14th, possibly 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th chapter, if you're in there... Okay, we're going to find it. We're going we're gonna to hear what God has to say to us today. Uh, I believe it was Pastor Lala asked me on uh, last week if I had a title for the message that I was going to share today. Um, and I was thankful to God he had given me that. Um, and I was able to share with her uh, hope for the saint and help for the sinner. And that was what the Lord had dropped in my spirit and that is what I began to uh, focus on. But even before that, I had been seeking the Lord for his word for uh, this message on today. And um, I had some thoughts of my own. Uh, but he knows what we, he knows what the people, he knows what we need right now. He knew what we were going to need right now today. And in fact, it's something that we need every day. So I want to talk um, to you today, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to allow the Holy Spirit to just speak through me, and we're going to share. Um, coming from the subject of love today. Love. So I want to um, I'm going to prepare myself. I, like, like I said, we're going to allow the Holy Spirit to speak, and, and I'm going to let him lead me through the message. I still have, share, I have prepared some thoughts of my own. Uh, well, the Lord led me, gave them to me. Amen. Amen. 
but I wrote some things down. But the ultimate goal today is just to let the Holy Spirit speak to his people. Amen. 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 So before we go any further, if you've got John open and you're at around the 13th, 14th chapter, you're in a good place. But before we go any further, we're going to offer up a word of prayer. Amen. Amen. Our Father and our God, Lord, it's once again that we come now to say thank you. We thank you today, God, for your grace and your mercy, Father God, for your peace and your loving kindness for this another day, Lord, that you've blessed and allowed all of us to see. We thank you, Lord God, that you woke us up this morning with our hearts and our minds on you and you made allowed us to make our way to this place of worship one more time, God. And Lord, we ask first now that you search our hearts, Lord, whatever sin you find in us, whatever's not pleasing in your sight, God, please forgive us and wash us clean of it. Make us whole and brand new in you. And again, Lord, we just say thank you. We thank you, Lord God, for this day, another opportunity to, to serve you, to praise you, to worship you, to learn of you, Lord God, to grow closer to you, God. And so we yield ourselves to you right now, Lord. I yield myself to you, Lord God, and ask for you to fall, to allow your anointing to fall fresh, Lord God, upon me, Lord God, that I will speak to your people and give them what you will have them to hear today. So anoint our ears, our hearts, and our minds afresh to hear your word today, Lord God, and to receive it into our hearts and then apply it to our lives today. We thank you today, God, because you love us like you do. We thank you for being our great, wonderful God, our Savior, our lover, our very best friend. We thank you, Lord God, for Jesus today. We thank you, Lord God, for your spirit, your presence in this place. So let your will, God, and your will alone be done in this place today, and we shall forever give your name the glory. In your name, Jesus, we pray. And now we take authority with the power of the blood of Jesus Christ that is on the inside of us. And we come against everything that is not of God, every evil, unclean spirit, every principality, every demonic force, everything that is not of God that has come now in this place today to try to hinder the progress of God. We bind you now in the name of Jesus. Satan, you have no power and you have no authority in this place. The word of God shall go forth in this place today. In Jesus' name, we command that you flee. In Jesus' name, the word of God shall go forth today in this place. Amen. Amen. As I said, we're coming and talking to you today on the subject of love. The, the topic was, or the, sub, the, the, the topic that I gave uh, was hope for the saint and help for the sinner. I'm going to go ahead and give you the answer to that right now. It's love. It's love. I wanna, I'm going to just allow myself to read what I have written here, and then we're going to go into scripture. I believe we're going to begin in the 14th chapter. So if you've got your pen there, you're good. Amen. It is love that reconciles us back to God the Father. It is also love that has set us apart from the, from the world. God is that love. God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the precious Holy Spirit, he is love. For he loves us. Our love for him and our love for one another is the answer. It is our hope. It is our hope. And it's the world's help. Our hope is the world's help. Love, church. Love, people of God is the answer. It's the sum total of it all. He is God. He is love. Amen? Amen. This world is in rapid decay, and surely the Christian eye that is watching and waiting for the coming of the Lord, the end is soon and very soon to come. And although we know this life has us in a very real spiritual warfare, and that we are living in a world that is made up of a majority that have turned from God and are seemingly taking over, embracing sin and all the things contrary to the word of God. Sometimes day to day, it is very daunting and discouraging of a task to press on and be all that God has called us to be. This world is so full of evil and hate, unkind and downright evil and conniving people. And we live amongst all this every day. Sometimes I hate to turn my TV on and look at the news because there's so much tragedy. 
and not just from natural disasters or, you know, things that are common to humanity, but just from blatant evil, just, just, just running rampant in the world, people just hurting one another. The, the love, truly, surely, we can see it is waxing cold in this day. We live amongst all of this. And then on top of all of that, we got our own personal struggles, challenges, and our own life, and our own relationships. Amen? Husbands and wives, mothers and daughters, and mothers and sons, and fathers and sons, and, and sisters and brothers, and uh, siblings, co co-workers, neighbors, friends, enemies. We got all of this stuff going on. Relationships, turmoil, ups and downs in life. And then in our own personal minds, you know, you got that battlefield in your mind, amen? You got, you got the enemy coming at you every day. You know, in your mind, sometime before you can get out of bed, he's battling and, 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 and throwing darts at you before you can even step out of your bed. So you're just fighting all of this stuff, even within yourself, in your hearts. You got all of this stuff going on. And then sickness even, your physical body is being attacked. You're troubled. You're going through things. The doctor has given you a report that you're concerned about. You're feeling in your body sickness. You've been given a diagnosis that you know is not good. You got all of these things to contend with, all of these things to deal with, and all of this other stuff is still yet going on around you. But you, saints, you made up in your mind to walk with Jesus and to know him and to love him. You have that comfort. You have that strength. You have that power within you because he's there. He's with you. So I've come here today to offer a word of reminder, a word of encouragement in this last and evil day. In this time where we got all of this stuff going on around us and even on the inside of us, that he's still here. His love is still ever present. I want you to be reminded of what he's already done, that he's already lived and died and made way for you to be reconciled back to the father. And he has not left you alone. You're not in it by yourself. It's all a part of his divine plan. How come? I don't know. I don't know why Jesus, I don't know why God decided to make life the way that it is. I don't know why he chose to make hurt a way for us to learn, for us to grow. I don't know why he chose pain for us to be enriched and, and for us to come to know him better. I don't know why he chose suffering that we could come to know better who he is. I don't know why, but it is. It is what it is. Amen. Before we get to the 14th chapter of John, I want, to, I want to say this. Let us remain faithful to Christ. Let's endure these hardships of life. Remembering we win in the end, church. Let us not forget in the midst of all that is going on around us who he is, what he did, why he did it, and what he has commanded us also to do. He is love. He died for us. That is because our forefathers, they messed up a real, real good situation. And here we are. But nonetheless, he died for us so that we could be reconciled to the father once again, because he loved us, because he loved us so much. That's why he did it. And he has commanded us to first love him and then also to love one another. We may get to that verse and I'll read it right out of the text for you, but I want you to get that, that he said that first love him. I bet many of you can say it with me, love him with all your heart. Mm. Yes, with your mind, your soul, your body, your spirit, everything. Give him all that you got. Love him first. And then he said, love one another. If you get that right, you got it all right. Amen. So 
we got this revelation, we have this understanding, and uh, we've accepted him as our Lord and our Savior, and he's walking with us. And, and it's a beautiful thing. Some days are better than others, and, you know, we, we're not always sad. We're not always going through. We rejoice because the, the joy of the Lord, it is our strength. It was, it's what carries us through. Amen. But yet and still, you know, we need to be reminded, we need to be encouraged sometimes that he is right here with us, that he loves us like he do. And, and even in the midst of all that we're going through, we have to love, too, because that's what he commanded us to do. So when we look into the, the book of John, the Gospels, I, I thank and praise God because I I just love, I love the word of God. I love when you, when I've come to a place where you can read the word of God and you can just hear Jesus talking to you. You know, it's not like you read in a book in scriptures that somebody else wrote. You hear him talking to you through the word. I remember when I first came to the Lord, my mother, she told me I wanted to know more about God. And she told me, she said, a good book to start with, baby, is the gospel of John. And I took her advice and I opened up the gospel of John and I began to read it. And you know what, saints? I begin to find out who Jesus is. I begin to find out that he really is love. I begin to find out that he loves me so much. And then you know what? I fell in love with him. And this love story is continuing on even right now as we speak. I fell in love with him and, and I began to see and, and, and see all that he went through and all that his disciples went through, all that the people, the followers that went, that, that what they went through. I saw all of the, the back and forth that they had to deal with and contend with. I saw all the great miracles, all that the Lord did. I saw how the Pharisees and the Sadducees, I saw how they, they fought at him and they, and the world, you know, still rejected him and they, they just, they just they wouldn't receive him. They just hated him. The world, the world just wouldn't, just wouldn't, just couldn't, just chose not to receive this love. And the disciples, the, the, the people, the Peter, I want to talk about Peter for a second. Um, they, they, just, they, 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 they were with him and they saw all of these great things that we read about today and they were experiencing them and they were going through them. And you know what? They felt just like you do. They felt just like I do. Here, 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 here we are, you know, here they are. They've been walking with Jesus and going through all of this stuff. They living in the world. It was rough back then too. Don't think that your stuff is new. Don't think that these are new challenges and new evils and new horrible things that are happening. All of this kind of stuff is there is nothing new under the sun. It was bad. It was horrible back then. They were going through so much, you know it, back then. But they had Jesus. They had him. But at this place in the gospel, Jesus is preparing them now because he's getting ready to go back to the father. He's he's completed his assignment. You have an assignment, too. Amen. He had just about completed his assignment. He hadn't done, you know, the ultimate completion of it. But he was getting them ready because he was going to have to go back. And so he was giving them the good instruction that they needed and he was giving them the, 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 the equipment that they needed to be able to carry on because he was going back to the father. He had done his assignment. He had left this good book full of the gospel, you know, for them to be able to go on and carry on his word. He was passing it over to them and he was going to go back. So he was preparing them and he was praying for them. He was preparing to pray for them. And that, that, that's the prayers that, that follow that are coming up, how Jesus prayed for himself, his strength, his own strength to get through. And, and then he prayed for his disciples, for their strength, for them to be able to carry on what he had called them to do. And then, you know what he did? He prayed for all of us. He prayed for you. All of those years ago, he had you in mind. It's in there. It's in there. But nevertheless, uh, that's all good. They... I, I, I want to I wanna read with you when he gave them a, com the new, com a new commandment. This is actually in the 13th chapter. And we're going to read the 14th chapter, 1 through, we're going to read 14, 1 through 6. But let's, let's begin first at 13, 13 and 34. He said, a new commandment I give to you that you love one another as I have loved you that you also love one another. He said, by this, all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. It reconciles us to him, but it also sets us apart. It makes it clear there's something different about you. 
So again, I'm going to read it again because I want you to get it because I want you, I want you to hear this great message that Jesus is, is, is giving them, this instruction. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. As I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples. If you have love for one another, you're going to need this. This is how you're going to be able to make it, how you're going to be able to minister, how you're going to be able to help somebody else. You got it. You see it. You've received me. You know. You got it. You got the hope. You know that he's coming back again. You know all the things that I've promised you. You've received it, but you got to help somebody else. That's how they're going to know that you got something that they want and something that they need. But what did Peter say? Y'all, see yourself in this. I see myself in his response. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? Where are you going? What you mean? What you talking about? Lord, where are you going? I think, I think, you know, this, this is such a, uh, a profound statement to me because Jesus let him know, I'm going away. I'm going back. I'm going back to the Father, and this is what I'm giving and leaving with you now, today. And Peter's concern is that's all good and fine, you know, but where are you going? Because I need you. Can anybody witness and relate to that with me today? You know, I know, I, I know you're real. I know you are who you say you are. I know that you're all powerful. I know that you love me. I know that you got me. But Lord, sometimes in the midst of all of this stuff, I feel so desperate, so alone, so entrapped in all of this mess. And I can't do this without you. What are you talking about? Where are you going? I need you here with me. I'm, in, I'm telling you today, he's right there. He's right there. He's so good. He's so wonderful. He's so kind. Peter said, Lord, where are you going? He said, where, where I'm going, you can't follow me now, but you'll follow me afterward. There's your hope. You, I, I'm coming back. Listen to what he says in 14. Are we there? He said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. But here's another disciple. This sound real good, Jesus. I love you. I know you. I know you got me. I know you. I know you. You all these things that you're saying are true, but I'm not feeling this right now. I'm not feeling it right now. It's a lot going on. I'm dealing with a lot of stuff. I'm dealing with a lot of stuff. It looks really bleak out here. And you, you, you kind of you, you, you talking to us like things are getting ready to change. Like you going somewhere and, and I, I can't do this without you. I don't, I don't understand. You know, you know, sometimes when you, when, when life gets so overwhelming, you know, you get kind of bl blurred and, and th your, your, your vision is, is dull and, and you can't really see your way and you know the truth, but you know, sometimes you just get so discouraged, just so weighted down that, you know, you just can't really feel, you know, you can't really feel what you know is true. And so Thomas is like, mm, no, he said, he said, Lord, we, we don't know where you're going. And how can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way. You know me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I'm the way. I'm your hope. I'm your answer. Yes, it's rough down here. Yes, we're going through a lot. Yes, it's a lot of persecution. Yes, it's a lot of evil, a lot of hatred. You're suffering all kinds of things. Yes, it is. I see you. I know you, but I'm telling you that you can have hope. I'm telling you that I got you. I'm telling you that I love you. I'm telling you I ain't came all this way and going to leave you now. I promise you, he said it. It's in his word. I promise you I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. These are the promises of God. 
These are the promises to the saints. This is where our hope lies. This is why we can be encouraged today in spite of what it looked like and what's going on in this world. This is why we can have hope today because Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer. He's the way. He's the truth. He's the knowledge. He's the everything. He's our keeper, our comfort, our confidant, our all and our all. He's everything that we need. There is no situation. There is no circumstance. There's nothing that you can or will go through in this life that he cannot bring you through. There's only two kinds of people in the world, saints. Two. Saints and sinners. If you want to call it something else, you can, by all means. The saved, the unsaved, the just, the unjust, the weak, the tear. However you want to say it, it's only two kinds of people. The believer and the unbeliever. That's it. That's it. There's only two kinds of people, but we all are going through this, this life together. We all, the, we all are going through the same types of situations and circumstances. We all are struggling with the same types of burdens and, 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 and affairs that are going on in life. We all have this stuff to deal with. We all have a, a body, a mind, a soul, and a spirit. We all have a soul that has to be saved. We all have that. You've heard it before. We all have that God, that, that God-sized hole in our heart that we need to be fulfilled. We all have that. We all have that. We all have that. We're all going through those things. But the, the difference is some of us, some of us have the fulfillment of the Holy Spirit. Some of us have Jesus Christ on the inside and we can be encouraged today and know today that he's with us. He got us and he's going to take us through this. That we have a reason and a purpose to go through our pains, to go through our struggles. We have a reason because we call out to him. We cry out to him when we're going through those struggles. We get to know him better. We come to know that his words are true, that his promises are true. We come to find all of these things out, everything that he said, we come to see it for ourselves. And then, 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 then we can help somebody else. That's his plan. That's his way. That's how he's chosen to do it. Love. So what is it? What is it? First Corinthians 13, four and eight. I'm going to just read it to you real quick because I don't think I gave it to him for him to put up there. The biblical definition of love tells us, tells that all love is and what it is not, that is patient, it's kind, it's not grievous or arrogant, it's not rude or selfish, it's not provoked or evil, it finds no joy in sin but rejoices in truth, it bears all things, it believes all things, it hopes in all things, it endures all things, it endures all things, love never fails, there is no problem, no situation, no circumstance, there is nothing going on in this life that love will not get you through. The promises of God tells us that all things work together for the good of them that love him, that are the call according to his purpose. So be encouraged today, wherever you are and whatever you're going through, that it's working together for your good. He has a plan and he has a purpose for your life. We are in the midst of this world that's dying. So above all, Keep loving one another earnestly. Since love covers a multitude of sins, when folks don't treat you right, when people blatantly disrespect you and hurt you without a cause, he said, love them anyway. Love covers a multitude of sins. Love does it. Love has it under control. Love can take care of it when you cannot. I just need you to just trust him and take him at his word. Love is the answer. Love is going to cover it. These are the promises of God. So no matter what you're going through, where your hurt lies, what somebody has done, or however somebody has mistreated you, I want you to understand and know today that's a real situation. I'm not trying to diminish it. I'm not trying to make you feel like you don't, you, you're not, you're not, there's no reason for you to be angry. But I want you to know today that God has required us to love. You love him first. You love him. And what did he say? If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And this is what I'm telling you to do. Love me. Know me. Spend time with me. 
seek my face and then love one another. It's going to take care of everything else. Love binds everything together in perfect harmony. Differences don't matter. We are all people. If we love each other, everything going to flow right. It's going to harmonize. It's going to be smooth. It's, it's, it's just, just going to work. When you just make up in your mind, I choose to obey you, God. I love you. There is no, 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 nothing to hinder you or stop you from that. There, there's nothing to be afraid of in that because 1 John 4, 18 says, there is no fear in love, but perfect love. It casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment. And whoever fear, fears has not been perfected in love. So you don't have to be afraid of anything. I want you to be encouraged today. Whatever this thing is that you're facing. And I just know that this is applicable to everybody in here. Whatever you're facing, if it's, if it's weighing down on your heart and mind, got you tightened up and the enemy is trying to place fear upon you, I want you to release that today because I want you to know that God loves you. I want you to know that he has a plan for you. That this thing, whatever it is, he working it out for your good. And not only for your good, but those that you are going to come into contact with. He's working it out. He's perfecting this in you. So there is nothing that can hinder or stop what he's doing. So I want you to be encouraged today. Romans 8, 31 says, if God is for us, who can be against us? Who shall separate us from the love of God? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution? 837 says, in all things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. More than conquerors through him who loved us. We can overcome anything. We can make it through. He's coming back again. He says, where I go, I'm coming again. I'm going to receive you unto myself. So be encouraged today, saints. This is your hope. But your hope is the world's help. The world, be these people, they're dying. Your neighbors, your coworkers, your friends, your enemies, they need to know this word today. They need to be loved on even when they're unlovable. So there's help for the sinner, for the lost, for the unjust, the unsaved today, and I hope in the love of God because he's already given it to us and it is now for us to spread the gospel, to share the good news. This is what it is. But these promises, so many of the promises that I've just shared with you today, these promises apply. They do apply to saints of God, those that have accepted him and have put their trust in him. The sinner is lost because they haven't accepted these promises. They haven't accepted Jesus Christ. And, and so they can't look to this way of love and, and they can't navigate through this tumultuous life that sometimes seems impossible and overwhelming and unfair. And it's just, it's just too much to bear. They can't navigate it through it like you can because you can be reminded and you can grab hope to that which you know is true and you can reach out and you can cry out. They don't have that. So we, we cry out for them today. We, 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 we petition today for their salvation. We petition today for their souls to be saved. There is yet help for the sinner. This is a re-extension of an offer that has already been presented to you. Amen. Amen. God does not desire that anyone perish, that anyone be lost. This same hope, this same joy, this same peace, this love, this unconditional, this un under you can't comprehend it. You can't wrap your hands around it. It's just too big. It covers everything. It it covers, it conquers all, everything. This love is for you too. So there's help for the sinner today. Ain't nobody leaving out of here today without the opportunity to have this same hope, to have this same love. I'm going to just read these scriptures for you and we're going to move along. I do believe, I don't know how much time, y'all didn't tell me how much time I have, but I know, I know I ain't at my home church, so... I'm going to try to be mindful of the time. Do I have a few more minutes? Um, you sure did not. 
He did not. <laughs> he did not. He did not. He did not. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm just going to give you the scripture. I'm going to read the scriptures to you. And we're going to move on from there. Amen. And we're going to allow the Holy Spirit to wrap this thing up. Matthew 22, 37 through 40. Let's hear it directly out of the word. He said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Just to make that clear, you know there are ten commandments. We know from the Old Testament. We know that that is the law. But Jesus came, he lived, and he died. He is the New Testament. Amen. We are now saved by grace. And so what he's telling you, if you get this right, you got everything else covered. Amen. Amen. So he said, little children, I shall be with you a little while longer. You will seek me. And as I said to the Jews, this is, I'm sorry, this is John 14, 34 through 35. Little children, I shall be with you a little while longer. You will seek me. And as I said to the Jews, where I'm going, you cannot come. So now I'm saying it to you, a new commandment, as we spoke earlier. I give to you that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples. And then he said, if you love me, John 14 and 15 through 18 and then 26 says, if you love me, keep my commandments and I will pray the father and he will give you another helper that may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither, neither receives, sees him nor knows him, but you know him. 26 says, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I have said to you. So I want you to be reminded today of his promises. Be reminded today of what he's done for you. Be reminded today that Jesus Christ has lived and he has died for our sins to reconcile us back to the Father. And now we are to love him with our whole hearts, our bodies, our souls, and our minds, and then also to love our neighbors as ourselves. And so we cry out today for the sinner man that don't know God today, and we offer our hope as his help. We offer the love of God and extend to him our hand, extend to him God's hand. Let him know that our Lord and our Savior is your Lord and your Savior if you will receive him today. If you will receive him today, you can have this same hope, this same peace. It's yours today. Fix it, Jesus. Fix it. You know. You know what your people need. You know what everybody is going through. So we just cry, fix it. Everybody's standing all over the building with me today. For every saint in the building, for every sinner in the building, this is the word of the Lord for you today. But I want you to know today that ain't nobody going to leave here today without the opportunity to know him. So we're going to pray together. We're going to pray together for our souls. Fear will not get the victory today. The enemy will not get the victory today in causing you to be afraid to come and give the preacher your hand and give Jesus your heart. We're going to pray this prayer together today before we close out of here. Amen. Amen. So let us all close our eyes and look to him. And we're going to pray this prayer together. And if this your prayer, if you want to have this hope, if you want to know Jesus Christ, the love of God, you want to know him, you want to know it for yourself today, I'm extending to you this offer of salvation. He says, simply said, if you just believe that I am who I say I am, that I am the son of God, that God sent me and I died on the cross, my blood was shed to cover your sins. If you would just believe that in your heart and confess it with your mouth, he said, today you shall be saved. Here is your opportunity. You don't have to go it alone. We all got to go through, but you don't have to go it alone. Jesus is going to see us through. Let us pray together. Our Father and our God, say it with me, church. Our Father and our God. Lord, I'm a sinner. Lord, I've sinned against you. I realize today that everything that I have said, done, and thought that was not like you was a sin against you, God.
Jesus. Amen. Lord God, I, I, I repent of my sins. Come on, church. I repent of my sins. And I ask you now, Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God. I believe that God sent you to die on the cross to save me from my sins. Lord, I repent. And I ask you now to come into my heart and to save my soul. Be the Lord of my life. Lead me and guide me. Let your helper come. The Holy Spirit, live with me. Dwell with me. Lead me and guide me. In your name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. Father God, it's once again that we just say thank you, Lord. We thank you for your word today, God. We thank you for your sweet fellowship with us today, God. We thank you, Lord God, that everything that has been done in this place, Lord God, is according to your will. So we lift up every saint to you today, God. Every person in this building, Lord God, meet their need, God. You see and you know what they're going through. So we cry out, Lord God, Lord God, for that you would just continue to bless, strengthen, heal, and deliver. Cover us all, Lord God, with your precious blood. Lead us from this day forward. We shall forever forever give your name the praise. You are our hope. You are our help. Lord, you are our everything. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. This is the word of God.